Now, what if you have an odd score distribution? Okay, I'm using the same samples here, but in this case, I've dropped the 12,000. Okay, so as you can see, we only have nine values. There's 14,000, 15,000, 15,000. Good day mga kaguro! Welcome back to Gurung Pinoy. With me, your coach Mek Manaay here. And today's topic is one of the topics that you've requested. We are going to be talking about the measures of central tendency, also known as the mean, median, and the mode. This is the very first video in our playlist which is called the assessment of learning. If this is your first time to visit our channel, make sure that you subscribe and that you hit the bell button so that you'll be notified of the new videos that we have. Now, since we're talking about the measures of central tendency here, you might want to get your scratch paper and a pencil or a pen so that you can easily follow our calculations in a little while. Now we go to the first measure of central tendency, which is the mean or the average. The mean or the average is the most popular measure of central tendency. This is equal to the sum of all the values in the data set divided by the number of values, which means that our formula for the mean would be the summation of x, which is your data value, divided by the n, which is the number of values that you have. Now let's go to our example. Say you have 10 staff members, and these are the salaries of your 10 staff members. One staff member receives 15,000, the other one receives 18,000, and so on. Now if you will be solving for the average mean, you use the formula summation of x divided by n. For summation of x here, what you need to do is to add all the salaries that we have here. So that means 15,000 plus 18,000 plus 16,000 and so on. Now once you get the sum, you just divide it by our n. The n here again is the total number of values that you have. So in this case, that's 10 which means that once you get the sum of the, the salaries that we have here, divide it by 10. Okay, I'll give you a few minutes to do your calculations. Alright, so we know that our mean here would be 30.7 thousand. I hope you got the correct answer. Now, what are some advantages of the mean? Firstly, the mean includes every value in your data set as part of the calculation. So all the numbers that you have there are accounted for when you use the mean. So that's one advantage of the mean. Another thing, it is the only measure of central tendency where the sum of the deviations of each value from the mean is always zero. So if you see this as a question in your let or in your board exam, if it is asking you for the only measure of central tendency where the sum of the deviations of each value from the mean is zero, your answer would be the mean. Now, what are some disadvantages of using the mean? The mean, one very important disadvantage of it is that it is easily affected by outliers when the distribution is skewed. What do we mean when we say outliers? Outliers would mean 
the very low values or the very high values that we have in a score distribution. Okay, so as you can see, in our sample a while ago, we have 15,000, 18,000, 16,000, which are actually very close together. Okay, they're actually very close to each other. But then you have 90,000 here and 95,000, which are very far from the other values that we have here. That's why our mean was greatly affected. Our mean in this distribution was 37.5 thousand. Okay, it is greatly uh, affected by your outliers, the very high values that we have. We go to the second measure of central tendency, which is the median. When you say median, this means the middle score for a set of data that has been arranged in order of magnitude. Now, this here is very important when you are dealing with data values and you want to get the median, it is very important for you to arrange the values first from smallest to biggest. If you don't arrange the values, then your answer would probably be wrong. So if you have the same example a while ago, okay, you have 10 staff members and you have the different salaries, the first thing that you need to do is to arrange the salaries here from smallest to biggest. Okay, so this is our arrangement. 12,000 is the lowest, and the highest, of course, would be 95,000. Now, we are trying to determine the median. So again, the median is the middlemost score. Now, we have a problem here because our distribution is an even distribution, which means that we don't actually have one median. Okay, we don't have a one middlemost score. Okay, so what do we do here? What we do is we get the values of the two middlemost scores there and we get their average. Okay, so you add 15,000 plus 16,000, then you divide it by 2. Or in this case here, it's actually very obvious that your median would just be 15.5 thousand, which is in the middle of 15,000 and 16,000. Okay, so again, we did that. We get the average of 15,000, which is the fifth value, and 16,000, which is the sixth value, because we have an even distribution. Okay, so that means it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we don't have a middlemost score. Okay, we, we can't just easily pick the median. So we got the average of the two middlemost scores here. Now, what if you have an odd score distribution okay i'm using the same samples here but in this case i've dropped the 12,000. okay so as you can see we only have nine values there's 14,000, 15,000, 15,000, and so on in this case here we actually have a median which is easily seen okay since we have 16,000 here as the fifth value in nine values that we have there are four numbers to the left of 16,000. There are also four numbers to the right of 16,000. So we can easily say that our median is 16,000. So again, don't forget, if you have an even score distribution, get the average of the two middlemost scores. Now, if you have an odd score distribution, it's very easy for you to just get the middlemost value as the median. And of course, do not forget to arrange the values first from smallest to biggest. Now, what are some advantages of using the median? Your median, unlike the mean, is less affected by outliers and skewed data. So in our example a while ago, we've seen that the mean was very much affected by the 90,000, 95,000 of salaries. But in this case here, our mean, uh, our median, I mean, was just 15.5. So that means the outliers, the very high score of 90,000 and 95,000 did not really affect our median. Now we go to the disadvantages. The disadvantage of the median is that it does not include every value in your data set, unlike the mean. So in the case of the mean, we added all the data set, then we got their average. 
but in your median here we only took the middlemost score so it does not really include every value in your data set now we go to the last measure of central tendency which is the mode the mode is the most frequent score in your data set if you have a histogram or a bar chart as the one that we see here at the side the mode represents the highest bar so if you are taking a look at this chart here we say that this highest bar would be the mode okay so in this type of bars for example in this type of chart we say that the mode would represent the most popular choice let's take a look at our example it's the same example that from the one that we had a while ago now unlike the median you don't really need to arrange the scores from smallest to biggest for you to get the mode but if it's going to be easier for you then do so okay so in this case here i've just arranged all the values from smallest to biggest now as you can see is very easy for us to to see that our mode here is 15,000 okay so that's 15,000 since we have three values that are 15,000 we only have one for 12k we only have one for 14k one for 16k and the rest of them but we have three values of 15,000 so that is our mode again the mode is the most frequently appearing score Okay, the most popular choice if you're looking at your bar graph. Now, since we only have one mode, we can call this distribution a unimodal distribution. Unimodal, that means it only has one mode. But sometimes your distribution can be bimodal or multimodal. Now, say one of these 15,000 is 16,000. Okay, when that happens, that means we have two values that are 15,000. And we also have two values that are 16,000. So in that case, we can call our distribution bimodal. If you have more than two modes, then you can call it multimodal. Now, what are some advantages of using the mode? One very important advantage for this is that the mode can be easily seen. Okay, if you have a question which asks for the central tendency that is very easy to calculate or to compute, your answer would be the mode because as you can see you don't really need to compute the mode okay you can just arrange or you can just look at all the data values that you have and you can tell which one is your mode now we go to the disadvantage one very important disadvantage of the mode is that it is not unique say your score distribution is bimodal which means that you have two modes or it is multimodal, which means that you have more than two modes. So in that case, you see that your mode is not unique since you have two or more than two. Another thing is that it does not provide a very good measure of central tendency when the most common mark, your mode, is far away from the rest of the data in your data set. So you have this as your mode. Yes, you can see the mode is very far from the rest of your data, data sets. So that means your mode is not really a very reliable source or measure of central tendency. So to summarize everything that you've learned today, when do we use the different types of measures of central tendency that we have? If your score distribution is just a normal score distribution, that means it's, it's not skewed, you don't have very low scores, you don't have very high scores, then the best central tendency measurement for you to use would be the mean. That's the average. Now, if you have a score distribution which is, which is skewed, that means you have very high values, you have very, very low values, then the best measure of central tendency for you to use would be the median. Because remember, the median is not easily affected by your outliers, by your low scores, by your high scores. If you're looking for the most popular choice, then your choice here would be the mode. Okay, It is easily seen. You don't really need to, com to compute it. Okay, The mode is the most popular choice in your score distribution. Alright, that ends our video. I hope you have learned a lot. It is first video that we have for our assessment of learning playlist please come back make sure that you subscribe and that you hit the bell button so that you'll know whenever we have a new video so again this is gurung pinoy saying 
maliit man na butil ng mga kaalaman, ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginhawaan. Thank you so much and happy learning mga kaguro!